The History of the Conservative Movement is a 15-part video series uh, by Dr. Gary North, produced by American Vision. Uh, and uh, these are 30-minute uh, uh, talks, uh, and they are illustrated as well. And you will find on these uh, uh, DVDs a number of out-of-print conservative books. And I've been talking with uh, Dr. North, kind of a summary of, of this whole, this, this entire series. We've only been able to scratch the surface in, a few, in, in these talks that we've done. Uh, if you really want an education on the history of the conservative movement and so much more, this is the series that you want to have. Uh, Dr. North, one, one element of the conservative movement is the role that Christians have played in this. Um, you did a, a series for us uh, called The Unknown History of the 20th Century, and we, you, where you, you talked about the Scopes trial in 1925, which seemed to be a victory for, uh, at least on paper, looked like a victory for, the, for Christianity, but it really wasn't. And Christians, for the most part, went underground socially and politically. Uh, they were probably brought back into things in the 1970s. You had Jimmy Carter, who ran as a born again, uh, as, as a born again uh, a, a president. Uh, the the news media had trouble with that; didn't even know what that was. Billy Graham comes along and writes a book on born again to give some instruction on all of this. Uh, then you had Jimmy Carter really being a disappointment to the conservative movement, pro homosexual, pro abortion, and then uh, an attack on. Uh, the, Christ the, the Christian school movement, which you had a, kind of had a part in, uh, in um, revealing what was at stake with all of that. And then Ronald Reagan comes along, 1980, and this national affairs briefing that took place. Give us a little background on, on, on that whole dynamic and the historical context of that. In a real sense, the Carter candidacy lit the fuse and the political activists that I would call the insiders, those associated with the Trilateral Commission, especially David Rockefeller, made a, a tremendous strategic error. They believed the country was ready for an, a, a perceived outsider, which was clearly Carter. And the background of Rockefeller, he was a, cons a liberal Protestant, ba had, uh, the, the family had bankrolled liberal Protestantism for decades at that point, since the turn of the century. And he wanted to get Christians back into political action, but he wanted them to support somebody of the establishment, and that was Carter. And they did get out and vote. It was never clear that that was the deciding factor. I don't think really that it was in Carter's candidacy, but it was perceived as such. In 1980, there was a recession. There had been the crisis in Iran. I mean, that recession, we're talking... Oh, it was a, it was a serious recession, yeah. and it was going to last for several years through Reagan's yeah, I mean, it got sure. so bad. I mean, what were mortgage rates in the, uh, during the Carter administration? Oh, yeah. Well, you had interest rates getting in double digit and T-bill rates getting up above 20%, historically unprecedented. So he was in a, a bind because of the recession and also because of the revolution in Iran and the, and the kidnapping of all of the people in the American embassy who were still in jail in Iran. So he was, he was suffering in terms of, of political positioning. So a group of individuals, mainly a fellow named Ed McAteer, but there were some others, Howard Phillips was another, decided to mobilize or attempt to mobilize pastors and conservative Protestants, along with conservative Catholics, into a more self-consciously Christian political I would guess you would call it special interest group, but at least more consistent in understanding what it was doing and why it was doing it, which because there had, there had been no self-conscious presentation of a Christian conservative position at that time in 1980. So they called this conference and they held it in Dallas, and they invited the three candidates, and there were three candidates. We forget the third, John Anderson, third party run. And only one of them accepted the invitation, and that was Reagan. 
So on the final night, after about, I think, four days of meetings, Reagan appears and speaks at Reunion Arena and draws a very large crowd. Yeah, what was the attendance? I it? would say that night it, it filled it, which would, I would say, something in the range of 13,000 people. And you were, you were there? Uh, yes, I was there. I had spoken the previous day, as I remember, in an afternoon session. So this was an event like no other in American political history, and I think like no other in American, what I would call born-again Christian political history. And the astounding thing is all record of it has disappeared. Yeah, I want to make this appeal to the audience out there. There were tapes yeah. of this. If anybody has a set of those tapes, uh, we would really like to have uh, them. You cannot write the history of the conservative movement without the tapes, and nobody has the tapes, including the participants. And they're dying off. Uh, I had a set and lost them, and I've tried to contact the people I know, and everybody says, well, maybe I got a copy of the one I gave, but I don't have any of the others. So it's a problem of, of reconstructing what took place, but I was there and I remember what took place, and it was, a, it was what I would call both ideological, that is, mobilizing the troops. It was, conf that is to say, confessional. Yeah. It was media-oriented. There were, there were lots and lots of television cameras there, and it was the, the money behind it was put up generally by businessmen who were Christians who wanted to get the folks out, and much of it was geared to, what do you do? How do you mobilize? How do you run a campaign? How do you mobilize people in a precinct? It was bread and butter stuff, but it was also why are we doing it? Why are we getting Christianity involved and so forth? And Reagan was a spectacular hit at that, at that meeting, and that would have been either late August or very early September of 80. And over the next two months, he pulled ahead of Carter. Uh, it was not perceived at that time that Reagan was a shoe-in, but over the next two months, it became clear that he was going to win the election, and this surprised the media. He won what? How many? Was it, oh, four, it, 40, it, was it, it was 49 it, states? It was. It wasn't that, was that. I think it was Mondale. Was that was Mondale state. was 49, but it was it was it was a route. There was no question about it, and it was a route that the pollsters had not seen coming early enough. So it was a surprise to Washington. There's no question about that. Reagan had touched people's heartstrings in some way. He had touched, as he continued to touch, people's emotional responses. He was a master of rhetoric. I believe the greatest master of political rhetoric in, uh, in modern American history. And the only person I think you can match him was World War II, uh, the speeches of Churchill during the war. Reagan was just a, a master communicator, and he did sense what Americans wanted to hear, and he gave it to them in very effective sound bites. He was a master. So this brought out, for the first time, conservatives who were Christians who were voting more self-consciously as both Christians and conservatives. This had not happened before, as a res or at least not since Prohibition in 19, uh, uh, 1920. So the result was that there was a perception that this guy's our guy. We put him in, and the media said the same thing. They, they said this huge, previously untapped voting block appeared out of nowhere, or almost out of nowhere, and gave him the victory. So the left and the conventional politicians blamed the Christian right for having given the margin of victory to Reagan. And when you win something or you think you have won something and you did it because of millions of other voters, you now have the perception that, wait a minute, I must be part of something. This is just, we've just in the talks that we've done, we've only gotten a smattering of what this series is all about. And if you would like to hear these types of stories and many, many more, uh, I would recommend The History of the Conservative Movement by Dr. Gary North. It's available at American Vision, at American Vision dot com or americanvision.org.